Hello and welcome to EFAP Mini Super Chat Catch Up for episode. Oh no, I don't even know what the number it's is. Two twenty. What yeah, episode is this? Could be two twenty. Could be. It was before the glass onion shenanigans. It was new. Ah uh, yes, it was. That's right. I'm gonna get well, right into safe, it. Is oh yeah, that's true. And, and just for for everybody, happy twenty twenty four, everybody. I hope yeah, you're all yeah, right. yeah, you yeah. all have a, a good new year. Pretty wow. more than a month in at that point, probably. Where are you in? What are you talking about? It's the next year. Ah, it's twenty twenty four. I'm he do be traveling. Yeah, he do be do. Um, all right, let's kick it off. First one is where is Jay? Are they safe? Are they all right? Yeah, Jay's doing great as far as I'm yes, aware. Jay's fine. In fact, by the time this comes out, there may be a new Jay video. Um, oh yes, yes, there there may be yeah. one that you guys will likely have interest in. As far as I'm aware, too, they recently, uh, Jay and, and, and Metal, did their coverage of A Measure of a Man, which is a famous TNG episode, is it not, Ragu? It is very famous, that's right. Yes, because still... they've been doing their uh, ongoing Star Trek coverage. Yes. Um, as for Jay on the old Fappens, uh, not sure exactly what the next episode may or may not be. Who knows? We'll likely be waiting for something that Jay wants to cover. Um, we shall see. Next up is Happy New Flumpus. Uh, Flumpus is that is that a regional holiday? Um, I think it's worldwide. Is it? Uh, okay, maybe that was a new thing. At the very least, it should be. Uh, Absolutely. Do you think the wound stayed on Thor because in 2018, when we threw the axe in the lake and the world serpent ate it and spat it back out, it was imbued with the venom of the world serpent, thus weakening Thor? Happy New Year. That's the theory. A lot of people say. That's interesting. I think it says Eater Imbued or something, which is the World Serpent Venom. In episode 10 of season 4, when Brienne is yelling, Ah, yeah, it totally sounds like she's yelling, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I had a Jay and Wolf listing movies moment with my apprentice. He hasn't seen any Arnie movies, Star Wars, or GB. GBB. G B B, no G B G B B. Probably not Great Britain. Garfield, no, that's not it. Um, General Gorn. Good. Grit. I don't know. Bleh. Good boy. Maybe. Uh, and loves current Marvel movies. Happy New Year. Well. Get on, uh, get on sharing with them a whole bunch of movies. Uh, Molly, defend Interstellar from a rags critique. Oh, um, gosh. Don't you think it's, uh, <laughs> God, wh which one? <laughs> um, why do you think, why does the sun hate doctors in medicine? Uh well because his his whole I, his whole life has been like destroyed by his father's pursuit of like all to do with science essentially right like it's it's run down his whole existence into just being a farmer he was abandoned by his dad when his dad taught him everything to be a farmer sort of thing only to 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 leave him in favor of science and then this fucker comes in like oh I know what's best for your son now it's gonna be science in the form of medicine it's just like no fuck off and you know they. They tricked him with uh, with a bunch of stuff. They're not being honest with him, and he's a hard-working farmer man. He's just not got time for this shit. He's tired of his, his sister and her. There's probably a whole bunch of history there where they fucked with him before, and he, and he's, he was just at his wit's end at that point. All right. That, uh, all right. <laughs> That's, That's just so weird how they make the... So. Isn't it weird? They just they forget about the sun, and then when they remember him, they turn him into this creepy, weird villain character. <laughs> The whole finale doesn't concern gone. him at all. It's so yeah, weird. Yeah, he's just not involved. Oh, here's my daughter, still alive. I can say goodbye. It's like, do you care about yourself? No. No, not even, I don't even remember his name. Reminds me of the fucking WandaVision shit with uh, forgetting Vision, you know? Nah. What exactly does a flaccid flash drive look like, Fringy, from episode 121? What do you call a flaccid flash drive? A floppy disk! Oh my goodness. That's a good, that's a good meme. 
Happy New Year, you massives. Mola, you gay. Love you, Mootle. Fringo, you sexy. Hello, Rags. Hi. Wings quote of the day. Regarding a potential boxing match. Do, uh, dude, I'm 15 years younger than Boogie. I would beat the brakes off that boy. He probably would. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, I think so, yeah. The I thing don't about think it is, I keep thinking about how fragile the both of them are, right? Like, if a hard hit comes in, or one of them gets pushed over, I can imagine they're not getting back up. Uh, it's a tough one. Maybe it's much in the same way of, like, Master Chief versus uh, Samus. It could be just a matter of which one gets that, that jump on the other. Because, you know, you sort of think about a, a Clash of the Titans in that way when you think of Wings and Boogie. Definitely Clash of the Titans. The Giants. I've also had to do jobs that require physical labor. I'm in much better shape than he is, even if a little bit heavier right now. All right. I still think people would pay out the nose to get a get a boxing match between those two. Uh, the starving people had their chance. I don't know what this relates to, but yes. I hope we get a sequel to Alita based on the manga, of course. I don't know that that would happen. Um, I don't think that film made enough money. Definitely sequel baits, though, doesn't it? And it has like a whole... Uh, well, because there's a whole, yeah, that's right, you got, but I mean, it had, yeah, budget about 200 million, made about 400 million, it's probably not good enough. Yeah, Edward Norton's at the end of it, isn't he? He is, yes, as the big bad. But yeah, it, it didn't make enough money, I don't think. Oh, well. I look forward and to every... Knows, like, what Fox even gets to do anymore, right? Or why 20th Century Studios. <laughs> Such, I don't like that name. I really don't. 20th Century Studios? Yeah, instead of 20th Century Fox. 20th I don't know what it is. Studios. 20th Century Studios 20th just doesn't feel right. I don't you know. Go, you, I, I couldn't tell you which one you... I like or dislike more. They both sound fine to me. You save a lot of ink with Fox, though. More that adds the up. Tiebreaker. The tiebreaker here. Um... What do you want me to do? Give my take or judge the arguments that have been put Which forth right now? Prefer? Definitely Which give you prefer? give your take. Mine, yeah. Uh, 20th Century Studios sounds more generic than Fox to me. Yeah, I think so too. It does sound more generic. I look forward to every EFAP. I find these discussions super insightful. I've been using them to shape a fantasy story I've been working on for six years now. You guys finally inspired me to sit down and write. Happy New Year to you beautiful nerds. Here's to many fleems. Aww. Thanks. Sitting down to write is the hardest part, so keep at it. Yes. Happy New Year, Dumbos. Crazy to see how far EFAP has come. Also, the new year brings a bunch of new chances to play DDLC, so do it. No, that's true. A whole new year. Each one is an opportunity. Every day, every hour could be one that we... Spend playing DDLC. Absolutely. The real question is whether we'll do it. Maybe. Everyone do your best Fred Durst impression. I'd have to hear him again. Yeah, I'm not super familiar, I'm afraid. Me. Yeah, I j I'm just not familiar with Fred Durst, unfortunately. If I was, I promise that I'd do my best to do the best impression that I have. Yeah. Uh, watching you yeah, from the middle of fun. Icelandic wilderness as Bear McCreary's old father plays in the background. My friends have abandoned me this year, but the E of House Fap never disappoints. Happy New Year, my long massives. Yeah, Happy New Year. We won't abandon happy you. Year. Sorry to hear that. That sounds like shit, but like the whole Sounds like they weren't really day, friends, my dude, if they would do that to you. Hope you're all right. At least you got Bear McCre McCreary's music in the uh, Icelandic landscape, though. He posted a bit of screenshots saying he'd 100 percent the game and just like, I'm biased, but I like this game a lot. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> uh, have you played Maid of Scare? It's a horror game set in Wales. Happy New Year's, Massive. No, I've heard of it, but How I do you it pronounce anymore. it? How do the Welsh pronounce it? The way I said it, I guess. Wow. You guess, you don't even know. Nope. I, no, uh, the, the, the words S K E R is not something that I find myself often saying. So, right. So, like, if there was actually a different way to be saying it, it's kind of just 
what what would you even what would you even run with as an uh, interpretation? Hmm. I don't know how many ways you could say that, especially like trying to involve what, what would be the Welsh pronunciation. Gerald. It's almost like my brain almost wants to go to like Swedish pronunciations as a way to try and. That's kind of what I just did there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> Uh, rant more about Avatar 2. Short metals forge bad. I'm I'm happy um, to forget the film. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm uh, sure I will, you know, whether I want to Av or not. Avatar The Way of Water was nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Yay. But, uh, but, I mean, Black Panther was nominated for Best Visual Effects, which Yay. feels like a mistake. That just feels like you're taking the piss. It's just because it's big yeah. Disney thing, and they'll just get. Oh, well, it's just, just you know. really, it's really awkward, isn't it? Because everything ever all at once didn't get nominated for best visual effects, and it would be like, well, the nature of the visual effects of that film leverage weren't as broad. It's like that's not what the category means. It's not like were they big or were there lots of them. It's like whether or not they were seamless, right? Whether the use of technology was clever or inventive, and I feel Which like that film has to fall, right? Fucking lame because visual. that plus like score and soundtrack plus like uh, editing mm. they pretend these things don't exist for animated films uh yes animated films well it's just there are only three animated films that have ever been nominated for best picture though it's beauty and the beast that was the first time ever um and then it was toy story 3 which means everything that uh, no then it was up and then it was toy story 3 which, when you run through the list of wow. films, it means Lion King wasn't nominated, it means Toy Story 1 and 2 weren't nominated, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Shrek, Shrek 2. Uh, like, th there's a lot of films. Uh, uh, oh, I, I think the... And Spirited Away wasn't nominated for Best Picture, I believe. It only got nominated for Best Animated uh, Feature. It, it's just, th there is a bias... I don't, I don't know if I'd even say it's a bias against animated films, but rather just a lack of even recognition of animated films. It's like... Yeah, you'll get, like, your own category, but, like, you don't get to compete with the big boys. Yeah. <laughs> like, which is really lame, when if you were to look at the ratio of, like, especially if you're talking about these, like, big animated films, the ratio of good ones to bad ones, it's pretty good. Like, the ratio of good animated films to bad ones, if you're looking at, like, the Pixar sort of DreamWorks, like, it, it's it's not bad, like, it's a ratio at all. Um, obviously, if you're looking at Pixar up until 2008, it's like, what, one movie that was kind of okay, Cars, and everything else was really great? And yet, you know, none of that really... Oh, and of course, the fact that none of the Aardman films have ever been nominated for Best Picture, Chicken Run, Wallace and Gromit, never been nominated. And it's weird, because my, my brain's still kind of charged off of watching Puss in Boots, which was, yes. like, I love that movie. Yes. So oh, that's the relevant it, it's one this year, right? Kinda, it's shit. That it just Puss almost doesn't Avatar get a chance. The Way of Water was nominated, and Puss in Boots wasn't, because Puss in Boots is an animated film, so it wasn't going to get nominated for Best Picture. But Way of Water is let... Uh, that's animated. Fuck off. It, it's just well, like, it's, it, it is more or less animated, isn't it? But, like, it's the same with, like, The Lion King, right? It's like, it's an animated film, but for some reason, people don't think that it is. It's literally all animation. It's an animated movie, but it isn't considered one, because Avatar it's going for a realistic Avatar has live-action people in it at one point. It does have live-action people. And... That's true. It has people no, doesn't have characters. I don't think that there's a single environment that's real, though. Not a single one. I don't know that there's a single shot in that film that doesn't have visual effects. I think legitimately every single shot. Which isn't a problem, by the way. It's just kind of interesting, though. Yeah. But it's, um... Yeah, I guess that is pretty stark this year, right? Because if you were to gauge based on the types of films that have been talked about this year, favorably, Puss in Boots is like... It's got some legs on it. Like, it, people are still talking about it. Whenever this video, are, I, yeah. I don't know, whatever, whenever this comes out, I'm not so sure. But like, as of right now, people are still talking about it and everybody fucking loves it. But like, it was never, it was, it never had a chance. And could you imagine if it didn't win? Because in terms of the, the, uh, the films that's going up against, it's, it's actually a fairly good selection. Sea Beast is in there. That movie was pretty cool. Uh, I haven't seen, um, Del Toro's Pinocchio, but I will. And there's that. That's on our list to see, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's also Turning Red, which, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. There's always the obligatory Pixar nomination. No yeah. light year though. <laughs> that Pink movie just came and went. Oh, people, Nobody yeah, it cared. did. People just forgotten about that. I think I did. Mm hmm Happy New Year, EFAP. Please read Berserk one day. Perhaps Maybe. I shall. I graduated both high school and college with EFAP to keep me company along the way. Very thankful to the whole crew for a great year. Happy 2023. 
Yeah, happy 2023 to you. It does feel weird knowing that. I think it'll be a like, good one. There are people who, if they listen to EFAB as soon as it started, have gone through, like, probably the end years of, well, a lot of the end years of, of big education, right, and moving into, like, latter years of their life, and they must be like, man, EFAB's been around for a while, and we're just sitting here like, hey, we're just watching the movies and then talking about them. You're living your whole life. Careful now. Or rather be experimental. Do all the fun things. Uh, Avatar 2 The Last Whalebender. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> if they introduce the yeah. Fire Nation in the fucking next one, that's gonna be so funny. <laughs> well, they are. All the are elements. they introducing the Fire Tribe? I'm pretty sure they are introducing well, a Fire Tribe. I mean more... So, when I say Fire Nation, I'm referring to the Fire Nation from the actual oh, show. like the evil in, Fire Nation that wants they, to take over the like. The yeah, world. like if they introduce it almost as a one-to-one, -one, as opposed to just, they are Na'vi, they are nice, and they have firepower or some bullshit. Fring, explain how bad Avatar is to Duma. Happy New Year. Oh, he was there. We talked about it. <laughs> it was a very, very shit movie. Uh, and I think he, I think he, he didn't think it was like great or anything. I think he said he enjoyed it, mm. um, but I, I don't remember him having like much to say, like that was super favorable about it. Thoughts on the designs of these new Pokemon: Flamigo, Tinkaton, Tatsugiri, and Don Dozo. Do you want to collect them up, and we shall? Yeah, go ahead and put them in the uh, text thing, and I'll yeah, uh, yeah, give them yeah. a look here. We'll see what's up. Uh... Happy New Year, men, frogs, and dogs of the long. Whoa. Thank you very much. Greetings, your longness, King Mauler of EFAP. I'm here to humbly request an unbridled slash critique of the Iron Giant. Also, Rags, please don't ban me. I will not ban you. Unless you do something ban-worthy, then you will be banned. As for Iron Giant coverage, maybe someday. Maybe, maybe. Completely missed the Rings of Power arc. If I was there, I would have super chatted, Wow, dude, Mordor, on episode 7 ending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Mordor. <laughs> uh, they thought that was so clever when they had the text change. Oh, oh man. Was... <laughs> that was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. <laughs> you just reminded me. You reminded me. Uh... What's the most dramatic way a main character can kill someone he loves? Oh Most man, that's way. there's no way you could come up with just an answer. Um, it's super dependent. Well, part of the drama that would come from that is going to be very specific to those people's relationship with one another. Um, so it it's just it's super. Yeah, it's just super contextual. I hate to give the it depends answer. I suppose you try but... and make every element of it. Um meaningful to those characters slash the journeys either of them have been on like even the weapon or the nature of the speed of their death the environment they're in the reasoning for the kill yeah, like the the, reasoning. it all has stuff behind the reasoning it will probably be like the most important i think also um, i'm saying if you can get everything every element has something behind it that you can think and talk about and really good performances and yeah that's probably how you crank the dramatis the dramatic Theories on Arcane Season 2 teaser trailer. I don't think you covered it in the EFAPs. I'm happy with more Vander and Silco scenes. The writers mentioned on Reddit coming in Season 2. It'll complement the sister's story. Um, There's not much to go on on the Season 2 teaser. It's very limited, but I think there's yes. uh, Warwick sounds, right? So he's in there. I think so, which is... That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Get our Supreme Leader Arch. Um... New Year's? I don't know if you... Well, um, if if you guys would like to... Is it not Dragon here? Um, the Dragon? Oh, I, I was gonna try and just drag into... Okay, so this this is Flamigo. I don't think you're surprised. Oh, um, yeah, that's that follows. Looks, looks fine. Looks fine. Looks, looks like a Flamingo. flamingo. Uh, so, yeah, that's... uh. That's it. That's all that's, I got, really. It almost yeah. feels yeah. like something's they, missing, like yeah. they needed to Pokemon it up a bit more. Like he needed like a plumage on his head, or maybe he needed big feet. To make him look a bit less like just an actual... Just, just a flamingo, flamingo. <laughs> yeah. He needed some like, like a, some stripes or a little like a detail coloring on him, or yeah. like I said, plumage on the head. 
or it needs to have like some feet. Give me I don't some know. Fire decals. Yeah, something. Anyway, that's flamingo. Uh, okay. I guess it's fine. It's just a flamingo, and I think flamingos okay. are pretty cool. So you know, that's all right. Yep. This is the next one. This is Tinkaton. Uh, uh which I don't like at all. No. No, not a fan. I'm a, I'm against Tinkaton. I am I'm anti Tinkaton. Uh, let me. You'll come with this giant hammer, huh? Yeah, I, I guess. The next up, we have Tatsugiri. This is Tatsugiri. Seems pretty chill. He's a piece of sushi. <laughs> it's a little, little fish. He's a sushi fish. He's That's a sushi. He See, this is the kind oh, of Pokemon like you want to have, to like Hydro Blast or something, and it annihilates yeah. Pokemon. What is oh, I, I like this one. I, I want to know looks what. Looks like he's on a little cloud. You know, does he float? Is that his thing? Oh, all forms have a white throat, a white throat sack, which resembles a bed of rice when inflated. It inflates <laughs> oh, its throat that's... sack okay. to camouflage <laughs> itself. And the only thing that I can imagine is that it's inflating Camouflages himself to blend in as sushi, which <laughs> just makes him look like food, it which is probably like not the best food. camouflage. Exactly. It's actually pretty bad camouflage, I would imagine. It'd be like if a if like a pig had camouflage that made him look like a bacon and egg sandwich. <laughs> yeah. My camouflage makes me look like random raw meat in the woods. Yeah. yeah. A pile of raw meat. Yeah. All right. The next is Don Dozo. Eh, he's okay. Don Dozo's yeah. all right. I think Don Dozo's all right. Definitely okay. very fishy. He's like a big old catfish, big blue catfish whale. Yeah. Uh, I'm all right with him. I don't have anything against Don Dozo. All right. So, Do we have a favorite? Uh, yeah. Is it the sushi? Uh, uh, my favorite might be the sushi one. I yeah. think it's the sushi one. There's just something about him. <laughs> He's very quaint. I like yeah. him. Yeah. After that, I I don't know if the flamingo gets to even count, but because it's just a flamingo. I like um, the whale. I like the whale's pretty like nice. Whale. He's all right. Yeah. The worst one is the one with the hammer. Yeah, the easily the worst. The one with the hammer is dumb. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, sitting here building up my base in Daisy, listening to y'all talk about rags nuts. God, I love EFAP. Yeah, I love my nuts. <laughs> a normal day. Yeah, man. Gucci Good stuff. Tainty scroat. All right. Gucci tainty scroat. <laughs> Always nice to see John and Das on here. Just add Ross Scott and you'll have all my favorite machinima creators in one place. Hail chat, hola rags. Oh, hi. I didn't even think about that, yeah, because Das is like idiot box and stuff. That would count as machinima, right? Because it's all Gmod. That is machinima. Machine cinema. All it means is that you're using a game engine to create like a cinematic experience. Yeah. That Gary's mod was probably the best. I, I In fact, yeah, because like Halo has always been pretty strong. Though I will say, it seems like the newer games have less and less baked in those features to make Machinima as it's, viable. Um, it's all about like, uh, the the Valve Source engine and the, yes. the Source stuff. Like people make full out movies and everything with them. Yeah, no, it's it's really yeah. cool. But I mean, it's... the thing is, is um, you see, because like John still uses Reach. Um, he used Reach all the way until the end of Arby and the Chief, and it's like the reason why he kept using Reach is because Reach was. Uh, as he said, like the best, the best game like of the Halo series to do it for because like as it went on, four did a thing where like uh, I think the the whole thing of like the head bombing was a glitch that uh, that Rooster Teeth found in Halo CE, where if you aim if you if you aim like low enough, there's like a glitch where the character will aim down but his head is up, and then like yeah. in Halo two they just put it in as a feature. Halo three did it. Halo four did it. Uh, uh, no, Halo 3 and, and Reach did it, but then in Halo 4, when you walk, the gun gets pointed up. It's like, oh, that makes it, like, way harder. Because, like, every time you want a character to walk, they awkwardly put their gun up and point it at whoever they're walking towards. Um, and I think... Did they ever have similar. the ability to equip nothing so that you just didn't have uh, a gun with you? The problem is, if you equip nothing, you... I don't think that Halo 4 did, because in Halo 3, it, it looks like... It, it looks really weird. Like, it, Master Chief is just sort of standing there with his arms out like he's ready to fight you. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not just him walking along normally. It's the reason why, like, basically any machinima you saw would just have them with like a pistol or a plasma, uh, uh, a plasma pistol. It's just less awkward. But but I guess it's the thing is like um, 
when it comes to games that are really good for, like, machinima, Halo was probably the best one that didn't require you to essentially figure out animation for real. Because, like, with Gary's mod and the stuff that Das did, that's just, like, full-blown, like, 3D animation. Um, which is difficult, right? Like, that's pretty hard. Um, A lot of what he does is difficult, and he makes it look easy. He's got what I would call uh, like, Talon. Oh, yeah. Talon. Uh, Talon, yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I really liked that Das made, because everybody really liked it, was the idiot box, um, which I really liked too. Um, I really liked the DSP series that he did. <laughs> did you guys ever watch that one? I think so. DSP series? I don't think it I was, saw that one. It, no. was not, it was like DSP, and he lived with this giant, like, demon guy. And it was like chronicling their sort of adventures in YouTube land. Um, and I remember that it was, because uh, it was around like 2012, 2013, I think that was happening. So it was a lot of references to what the landscape looked back then. And, and it was funny, there was, <laughs> there was this joke where DSP was just rambling for like, like 30, 40 minutes about random bullshit. And it's like, you, you know, like, you know, the point of a, a let's play is to play the game, right? And it's like the timer says that he's been talking for two hours and he <laughs> hits start. He's like, yeah, I know that's stupid. And then the demon's like, you're not going to leave all that pointless crap in, are you? And DSP's just like, basically refuses. And then the demon's like, are you shitting me? Just do some editing. And then he immediately is like, Oh, you just said a bad. Why did you just say a bad? <laughs> like, why did you even suggest editing? Like, the notion is so terrifying that DSP starts screaming to the heavens to actually, like, sit down and edit. Because, of course, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, right? DSP has been a laughingstock for that long. He's still going. Well, yeah, because those came out a, about a decade ago at this point, those videos. And that was, like, that feels like it was almost at the tail end of just DSP clownery, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But it wasn't. He just keeps going. He's the gift that keeps on giving. He just carries forth, yeah. Well, in a certain sense, there's something to admire there, that despite getting shit on pretty relentlessly, he just keeps trucking on, making making his live streams. I suppose the same... Who do, who do you think is, is more sad? DSP or Wings of Redemption? Because I, I have an answer. Wings. <laughs> yeah, wings. it's Wings. Yeah. Wings is the sadder one of the two. Second in game. Man, the fact... I'm just I'm just still floored by the fact that DSP like did the thing where he stacked up a bunch of video games, would put his camera on the fucking. Oh, I thought you were talking about him wiping on stream or whatever. Oh, there was, <laughs> yeah, there was that, but the, but more so the fact that he would like use a camcorder. That's what you did like back in 2007. Like that was the kind of shit you did like really, really early on. But wasn't his argument that he maintained doing it because that was just the way that he did it? So he didn't <laughs> want to get broke. A don't fix it, right? That's, that's, by the way, guys, if you ever want to be, like, creative or something, you should have the attitude of constantly, how can I improve this? You what know can what I do it to reminds make me of? Better? Is mm -hmm. rubs. Oh, oh, you're gonna I say bet. scrotums. I bet you're like, what? How does it... There's an episode, forget who the guest star is, but it's an old man. I almost want to say it was, like, Dick Van Dyke or something. I can't remember who. It might have been. But yeah. he comes in. And uh, Kelso is like thoroughly impressed, singing his praises. He's an inspiration, all this stuff. And he's got like an impressive tenure sort of thing. Um, and then something happens that requires attention. And he, in front of like everybody, just does something that is fucking out of date by like 10 years. Like uh, in terms of medical technology. And it's almost like scary to some of the interns. And then, uh, you know, he laughs it off. And I think everything's chill. And even Kelso like defends him. Then he pulls him aside, and I think it's near the end of the episode, and he basically gives him this whole speech about how you can't continue as you are. It's fucking, it's fucked up. You have to actually, like, if you want to be a doctor that's actually worth something, you actually have to pay attention. You still have to learn. You're never done learning. Uh, yeah. You have to keep updating. So, and, and I think Kelso even says, like, why do you think I fucking read all, like, the newest journals or I keep up to date with anything advancing? It's like, because I want to actually be a good doctor. And uh, I just remember that scene really well, because I was like, man, Scrubs, you're, you're pulling out some, some good shit every once in a while in the middle of all the jokes. I like Scrubs. I, like it too. I, uh, I might rewatch really that like at some point. Scrubs. I don't see why not. I would take a while to get through eight seasons. Well, nine. I didn't watch the ninth season. <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone remembers the Brendan Fraser episode. You'd have to guess. Right, so yeah, because I haven't. Scrubs. I have not seen it. No. 
What were you doing when I was watching TV, Rags? Were you playing sports ball? Yes. Ew. I was playing the sports ball. Seconding Gary's recommendation for watching Venture Bros. Excellent animated comedy with memorable characters. Also, Happy New Year, Long Men. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean nothing but good things about it. I haven't seen it. I have seen some Venture Bros, and I've really liked it. Muller, please inform Metal he has dropped to my third favorite German, and if he keeps up this tomfoolery, he may lose the top five. Ooh, what do you do? I don't know. He's Metal, so... It could be anything. Me metal, as much as I love Metal, he's never going to be my number one favorite German. Uh, it's a tough running. Yeah, it's really tough. It's, it's, it's really tough to unseat the classics. I don't think that it was Kratos in the mural that showed his death in every other picture. His red mark is always shown, but in that part it was never shown. I think the older person in Atreus' arms was supposed to be Odin. That would make a lot of sense. Well, that's, that's an easy read, right? Is that the prophecy actually was, like, fulfilled. Um, it's just that they misunderstood it. That's <clears throat> with a lot of them, yeah. Well, it's an interesting commentary on the nature of perspective, isn't it? It's just like, you can be presented with the same piece of information, but because of your own biases and insecurities, it can just be, like, perceived as completely different from what it actually is. Uh, Sonic fans have been very defensive of Sonic Frontiers on Twitter. They cannot handle anyone rating it lower than the best game of all time. <laughs> as far as I know, <laughs> that's the same, like, there's just a huge cycle the Sonic fans go through. Every time, uh, well, what was it? Was because Sonic Forces was the one that everybody thought was really bad. I remember that much. Like, nobody likes Sonic Forces, even Sonic fans don't like it, or maybe <laughs> there's some that do. I think it's just the, the problem is like, I don't know, man. Sonic has enough brand recognition and name recognition that something like Frontiers, it's like, surely you should expect more polished games than this from the Sonic franchise. Like, the Sonic franchise is not some little, like, middle market or, like, indie game. It's like Sega's main franchise. It you makes a lot of it. money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, I can believe it, because what else do they really have anymore? Like, Super Monkey Ball? Well, you like think Daytona? about Sonic's reputation thing? and everything. Yeah, and, right. like, it's Sonic is weird, like, as a franchise, because it's the most, like, bizarre, weird, cringe, sort of, like, with, with such a bad reputation, but at the same time... It seems to make a lot of money, seemingly just, like, how? Well, it's, it's kind of, it seems like there's a divide, right? Like, the kind of, there, were, there was old Sonic, and then there was new Sonic. And, and, like, there seems to be, like, a stark divide between a lot of, like, a broad audience that really liked old Sonic, and a much smaller audience that likes the new Sonic stuff. I, d I don't know that there are many people who look at, like, Sonic 2 and go, that's a lame game. I feel like everybody looks at that game and goes, yeah, it's really cool and fun, and, like, Sonic's pretty cool as well. He's just, like, this little, you know, he's, like, this fast running hedgehog with a little bit of attitude. And then, like, it was Sonic Adventure that kicked off what Sonic is now. <laughs> like, something that it almost seems like it's never been able to move past, which is, like, late 90s, early 2000s, like, tubular, that kind of shit. Like, Yay. it's... And it's like, that's what Shadow the Hedgehog is. He is like a relic of the early 2000s. Like, <laughs> <Kept> alive. <laughs> like, a relic of the early 2000s. Kind of. Which, I mean, I've often talked about how the 90s through to 2000s, like, I really like that era for media. But you had stuff like that. <laughs> like, I just, I guess it's, I, I get what you mean though, Rags. It's like, it's almost kind of fascinating that it's Sega's biggest thing. But at the same time, it's not. Because what else do they have? What else does Sega make other than, like, I know that they've made a lot of stuff in the past, but, like, how many of them are long-running franchises at this point? What else do they do? Mola, could you name one other Sega franchise other than Sonic, Super Monkey Ball, and Daytona? That I'm just totally forgetting. So, first off, I wouldn't have been able to tell you Super Monkey Ball and Daytona, but, um... <laughs> oh, they do Sega's... Total War. They accomplish Total War. There's that. Sega... They Virtual make, Fighter? They, they make things. I love that. It's just they used to make... They used to make more things. That's the thing. What uh, about and, as a Earth Shen Defense does Force? Shenmue, does Shenmue count anymore? Because wasn't Shenmue that was in? They published Yakuza. I guess I got that. Um, develop and publish that. I guess that's the thing. It's just like I I don't know what else they do and they do anymore. Some people like Jet Set Radio. 
Uh, yeah, but that was one game, right? I guess I'm talking like... Or, or are there more games than that for Jet Set Radio? I don't follow it. They did Crazy Taxi, which was oh, cool. Oh, Crazy but... Taxi. I like that arcade yeah, game. That game was cool. Oh, well, that game was on uh, the Dreamcast, and then they ported it over to PS2 and GameCube, I think. Um, I, Everything that I've ever heard is that the Dreamcast was really cool, but it was doomed because of everything that happened in the years prior with, like, Sega's handling of the Saturn and their X32 and everything. The, like, it was a console that was ahead of its time. It had a lot of really great games, um, but people just didn't trust Sega enough at that point. Because that was, like, kind of before a lot of the companies had figured out the way that you do consoles, which is you make one and then you support it for, like, six, seven years. You don't throw in these crazy, like, peripherals. You don't do these weird attachments where some games only work with those attachments. You put out the console and then you just support it for the next six, seven years and then you make the next one. Whereas in the 90s, Sega was doing like the 32X and like all of these peripheral add-ons and then the Saturn. And it's like, yeah, by the time the Dreamcast comes out, it's like, are you going to support this for longer than three years, though? Because if not, why wouldn't you just buy like a PlayStation or an N64? And then, of course, when the PS2 came out, it was over. It's just kind of interesting um, that Sega, like the, 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 uh, the Genesis was like a real competitor to the SNES. Like, it was a legitimate competitor. And then all of a sudden, you know, like, in the span of 10 years. Down yeah. to go. Mm, yeah. But hey, maybe, maybe like, Sonic Frontiers 2 will be, like, a more refined, more... I'm not even memeing, by the way. Maybe Sonic, like, Frontiers 2 will be a more refined, polished uh, game. Maybe that will be the one where it's like, well, we tried this and Sonic fans seem to really like it. So we can just focus in on it. Smooth out, uh, like, those, you know, hard edges figure it out, develop on it, maybe it'll turn into something really cool. I would yeah. like for more good Sonic games, because I do like the good ones, it's just that I don't think that there are many of them. They should make Sonic Mania 2, though. That would be cool. Sonic Mania was really fun. <laughs> anyway, uh, next Super Chat. If the argument is between Joker, Avengers, Civil War, The Dark Knight, Spider-Verse, and Logan for best comic book superhero movie ever, which are you picking? What was um, the list again? Uh, okay, so the list is Joker, Avengers, Civil War, Dark Knight, Spider Verse, and Logan. I would pick uh, Joker if I was to be forced to like argue yeah. in favor of it. Avengers, I think, is is another one really that would strong. be pretty strong. I guess. To defend, yeah. As, as far as Spider Joker being really a strong. comic book movie, though, do you think that's? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's like, my it, question. If, if it if it's adapted from a source that is comics, comic it counts. Book. And I mean, they've that put it count. in the list, you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'd probably put it in the Joker list. Right uh, um, oh, it's so weird Spider because yeah, Joker, like Joker's a better movie than the Avengers, right? But they're so different, and Avengers just has this kind of adventurous, fighty, all the superheroes come together vibe to I don't know it. If I, I mean, there's way more variables in Avengers that they have to deal with, and they balance them That's really well. True. I think that yeah. it's really yeah. difficult for me to definitively say like, oh, it's obvious Joker's better. It's like. Oh no! And Civil War's got a lot of variables as well. I think Civil War might have the, one of the most variables out of all these. Maybe Spider Verse has more because it's dealing with multiverse. Uh, in a sense, you could say that it has more variables because of multiverse, but it's a much more focused story in terms of the characters. We've got three that we're really focusing on. Yeah. Um, I, I guess when I hear comic book movie, like as as much as I like Joker and as good as it is, it doesn't quite fit for me in my head. Like maybe in a technical sense. But it's not say. quite the same, you know? Well, does I get what you mean in terms of not... I don't know, yeah, I haven't that... seen Logan. <gasps> Have you not seen Logan? <gasps> no, I haven't. <gasps> so I don't know. Um, I don't know, I might... That's tough. Um, best superhero movie? Because if it was just best... Like, what's the difference between saying best movie, best superhero movie? I almost feel like that's a qualifier of having a certain kind of... Um, well, it was best comic book movie, not best. So, like, when you include best comic, comic book, book movie, movie okay, yeah, comic book movie. Walking uh, Dead was a film, right? That would be an eligible one. Well, no, Watchmen. It's, it's comic book superhero movies. What they said. Oh, comic was that what they said? Movie. Oh, okay, then. All right. Oh well, yeah. Joker's um, not a superhero. No, but he is in a superhero's I, comic. Yes, he is, and he's a supervillain. So, I'm just, I'm. I'm I'm thinking if there's like another obvious choice that's been is excluded. Is he a supervillain in that, or is he just a villain? 
is based on a supervillain. Super villain. Yeah, like what qualifies you as a supervillain is he qualifies in the same way Batman qualifies as a superhero. Superhero. What is super about Batman? It's like, well, he has really good tech. And there's nothing super about Joker either. Yeah. There's, uh, there's nothing super about, yeah. And yet, isn't it kind of funny that the, the most famous superhero and supervillain, neither of them have superpowers? <laughs> I mean, you know, across all iterations, you'll find Joker gets powers. Oh, uh, yeah. But like, same for the Batman. Generally, generally, people don't think of him as having superpowers. No. They think the base stats are usually guy. rich guy who has tech and crazy clown man. Yeah. I just, I just find that funny that the most, the most famous yeah. one, like both of them aren't actually superhero or supervillain in terms of having powers. I'm just thinking if there's another obvious choice that's been excluded from that list. Um... Uh, Batman Returns? Judge Dredd 1995. <laughs> Judge Dredd 1995. Batman yeah. Returns? What about Batman Returns? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I it would be cool to do a list of like top 10 superhero the movies. Billy from... Zane. Ranking the uh, top 10 over. Oh, <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm wondering because uh, what what about like, you know, Man Richard Donner, like Batman? Uh, not Batman. What the fuck? Superman? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, how does that how does that sit on that list there? Wreck. I mean, I find them quite enjoyable. I don't know how they... This is the thing. You start getting weird to compare these movies because they're so different. They I'm are, putting, like you know what? The first Superman against Batman Returns. It'd be like, uh... It's interesting. It's like they're not... The thing is, is that I imagine that if I were to, like, rewatch Superman, it would just be like, man, you're hitting a lot of, like, like standard story beats quite well. Like that that's it's one of those films, you know, that hits a lot of the standard story beats quite well and just doesn't have all of these crazy like fuck ups a lot of new movies have. New superhero movies anyway, with like these insane variables that aren't juggled properly at all. Yeah, I mean if I were like challenged to defend it as the best one, I'd pick one of these as a from a set. Probably feel the most confident defending Joker. Uh mm. I feel like that's the one that I can argue is the most airtight out of the selection um i agree it's the most airtight i might go with civil war or of yeah i i kind of want to go with like civil war or the avengers just because it makes more sense sort of, to explain uh, to people right like well, as i can a, understand this as a is... comic book superhero movie i can totally understand why you'd want to pick one of them instead of joke yeah and it's nothing against Joker at all. It just seems like it's off doing its own thing almost, and it's using that character. Um, but it doesn't feel like a comic book superhero movie, though in technicality you could say that it is. I know what you mean. Um, and of course, uh, but all those are is top notch. Well. Is really yeah, I really like that too because it embraces a style to it. The Dark Knight and Logan, top notch, of course. Uh, but yeah, I feel like you could defend yeah. all of these guys. You could defend all of those guys, including Logan and the Dark Knight. Hi, Rags. Hi. And Happy New Year to you all. Thank you very much. Uh, Rags, could you please tell us your best dad joke? Um, oh, gosh. They just have to happen. That's the thing. Dad <laughs> jokes, that's the part of the dad jokes. If they're prompted, they're not dad jokes. They just have to happen. That's In true. response to some organization, you know, not organization, but it, to... Like a response to the a context. stimuli, the dad makes the a joke. joke. Yeah, exactly. The context of the joke <laughs> is as important as the joke itself. Yeah. So by asking best dad joke, it can't be a bad joke or a dad joke. Damn. Chemistry of a dad joke. Uh, also, if Duma finishes Top Gun Maverick, would love to hear the continuation of the discussion from the Forge with Fringy. That twenty-minute take on movies hurts. Yes, it does. Uh, he did. He did finish watching it. Um, he thought it was terrible. Right. Uh, I don't think he, th no, I, so the problem is that, like, generally when I'm trying to say, like, if, if I think a film is, like, good or bad, I'm trying really hard not to, like, like, it would, it would be really weird if I said, like, a movie is terrible 5 out of 10, right? That would just be weird, <laughs> like, for me, right? Because it's, it's just, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, like, what he would, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure, like, what is, uh, what he would say is, like, total perspective on that film was. We only briefly talked about it. Uh, hey y'all, just wanted to wish you a happy new years and say thanks for all the good times. I recently started a new job at a crazy peak season. Seven days, 12 hours for two weeks. Y'all streams help me keep me sane. Sorry, help me wow. keep, help keep me sane. Thanks. And yeah, good to hear, man. I hope you're alright and get that, uh, 
them get them i mean is is, is that is that more pay you get for the peak season uh i mean if you work overtime you automatically get more pay anyway assuming yeah. that is overtime yeah i don't know i presume that would be overtime because well i anything guess i don't over, know how it, uh, well it depends on well, anything depend over 40 hours rate? a week does it depend on the state though just it just reminds me of Andor, where he's walking into the room to get information. And they're talking about how they want overtime and how they hope the current guy, who's like, I guess, uh, overseeing all of it, can authorize it. Just such a fucking normal conversation to have in work. Between, like, I'm pretty sure I had that that conversation where I'm just like, we can do overtime. It's like, yeah, but they better fucking record it. Christ, the fact that you can even do overtime and it's not recorded, it's like, ugh. I argued with someone on Twitter over Wakanda not sharing their cure for cancer and ability to fix disability. He called me a classic colonizer. <laughs> classic. Classic that's, that's colonizer, you point. thinking you should share medicine. That, yeah. That's what the colonizers, yeah, of all, of, of, of your, they were constantly being like, we should share our scientific discoveries with each other for the betterment of mankind. So like, there's one country in the whole planet that has a cure to cancer, and then everyone is like, I think we're going to agree to invade it to get that cure, and everyone's like, wow, that's fucked up. I'd be like, I don't know. Is it? Is it really? I don't know. Seems like there's, there's a different asshole in this scenario. Happy New Year, Everytism. A question for all who wish to answer. So we start the new year on a positive note. What is the nicest thing you can say about each EFAP host? Have a fun evening, everyone. The nicest thing that I could say about each EFAP host, um, what is the nicest thing that you could probably say about someone? I feel like whatever I general. say isn't going to be the nicest thing I could say, because the nicest thing yeah, is going to go so way further. I mean, it would probably be something relating to the fact that I think they have great integrity and that I respect them and trust them because of that. I afford them a level of confidence that no one else really else. No, very, very few people have, and that's due entirely to how they've behaved consistently over, you know, the years that I've known them. And that's not something that you could sort of cheat. You can't shortcut your way to that. It's only born of, it's like, uh, it's almost like exercising in a way. You can't really cheat your way through that. Um, so, and, and it's just, it's a descriptive mark of consistent good character. What I think is the nicest thing you could say about someone. Or is that the kindest thing you could say? Um, I'm not sure. Getting like deeper into a, the big selection, pretty huge compliment. I would also reflect that upon you. Uh, See, I would. I I was going to say the same thing, but it's like, well, I suppose I should add a new one. I think both these guys are super smart. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I mean, to to expand on it, I think that you have good methods of thinking, which is more important than. Oh, yeah. Than um than like strict knowledge. I think that it's way more important than simply knowing a lot of things is to have a good means of like passing through your own thoughts, a good means of of developing your conclusions, taking in information, filtering it through whatever framework you have, but trying to do so consistently to generate you know answers. Like that's yeah, I I think that both of you do that really really well. I think you guys are funny. Yay! You entertain me. <laughs> Uh, in all environments, <laughs> conversation. Imagine asking Synthetic Man that question. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, they're not Jewish. Well, the, the point <laughs> is, it's not a fair question to ask him to compliment his friends. I have it. Oh, yeah, he, he doesn't have do? friends. It's not fair. I don't know. Stop it. Stop. He's already dead. <laughs> No idea. What would he have nice to say? They're not, not white. <laughs> not straight white man. Uh, uh, Happy New Year, EFAB. Here's to another full year of pausing every frame. Hell yeah. We yeah. pause mm -hmm. all the frames. All 24 you frames pauses there, per second. Out. I really need to stop eating during this game. Oh, we were playing uh, Gardic Phone at this point. <laughs> Now I'm just imagining this this poor this poor viewer spitting out all of his food. <laughs> Definitely recommend games <laughs> eating while there's garlic phone. Um, hey massives, happy new year! First super chat here. Apologies in advance because this will be long. 
I wanted to show my appreciation for how you guys have improved my ability to distinguish between good and bad media. I'd also like to thank you guys for always entertaining me. My first EFAP was 34, and my second was 35. It was very refreshing and entertaining to see such a different way to look at media. I started watching every mainline episode, movies, minis, and gaming uh, as of EFAP 150, and I've been thoroughly enjoying everything you guys make. A couple of months ago, I started watching all of the old EFAP movies, minis, gamings, and mainline episode. I recently reached EFAP 63, and it's dawning on me just how much EFAP content there is. I've been keeping up with current EFAPs and can't get enough of you guys. Anyway, sorry for the length, but I know you guys won't have an issue with that. Have a great 2023. Also, <laughs> hi, Rags. Hello. Oh, that's really great to hear. I'm glad you enjoy yeah, it. Man. It is kind of nuts, um, yep. because uh, not it all right. cycles through just me. I've, I've, I uh, don't have anybody, like, sort of chopping everything up and putting it out, but... Um, we do. I, I think we do a pretty diverse set of content, considering we're sort of one oh, absolutely. Um, well, uh, EFAP movies is a whole format, right? Yeah, and to be honest with you, it's it's getting insane how many EFAP movies have been recorded versus how many released. But I'd also say it's getting a little insane how many have been edited. So don't worry, you guys have got so many EFAP movies on the way. EFAP movies is such a cool format. <laughs> it is a fun format. I was saying, I think, yeah, uh, our chemistry goes really well to just watching movies live and bringing in people who can gel with us. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great, and, and, you know, a lot of people are like, I would prefer an audio um, commentary. I don't know, I kind of like that it's all in one go. You don't need anything going in. You don't need to set up anything on your yeah, end. Yeah, I ready. really value that. Because I just generally don't watch audio commentaries unless there's some kind of visual that accompanies it. Um, yeah, yeah. That'd be, I, that'd be more silence or boring things or just like not funny jokes and stuff i appreciate so. people um sort of being invested in the idea like i'm totally fine with the idea of enjoying it and stuff it's just that uh i, I find this format to be superior that's all i do too yeah um but yes the they're, they're already editors set on their arcs respectively that are you'll see the results of in as much as years to come it's kind of insane but uh, i was actually saying on the discord that I hope to get to a point where we have regular EFAP movie releases alongside gaming, alongside the main podcast, alongside videos just coming. I'll figure it out. Uh, what is the N-word for blue avatar people? I don't um, think they should uh, probably have something uh, like that I, in the films, right? Surely they do, right? Uh, like I they call them a particularly uh, nasty word and the of, Navi react to it. It's, like, <gasps> it's gotta be Smurfs, right? Surely. Smurfs. I don't know if this, I guess do they use that in universe at all? No, that's it. I don't think they ever will because it's such a meta thing. Dances with Smurfs. <laughs> it's, it's like copyrighted, or maybe <laughs> it's uh, they don't want to. It's just a direct <laughs> acknowledgement of a South Park joke that it was a little too accurate. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, um, I'm not sure. We never see it. It's because the world doesn't have much grit. World building. Um, it's it's just not a very uh like especially when people are fighting each other people can say some pretty harsh things about each other when they're fighting. It's like one of the things that separates like war movies that feel really grounded and gritty with like the ones that feel incredibly tame is the fact that you know people will yell things at each other when they're fighting. I think um but, it's, uh, yeah. am I forgetting the, the IP the one in space in the future where they. Colonized Lost like in space. Or the solar system. The expanse. That's it. I, uh, it's funny because what I just said oh, applies to a lot of things, but that is the one I was thinking. I was of. about to say destiny. <laughs> um, yeah, space. they call people who live on the asteroid belt belters, right? And it's belters. Yes. Earthers as well. And that could that seems like yeah. it could either be a, a term of insult or just a description. It could be, yeah. yeah. Well, like, I think depending I think the on nature the of, like, a lot of the people who live in the belt actually refer to themselves as belters, like they just wear it. As, um, um, I'm pretty sure that they, were they wear the belt well. with pride. I well, yeah. you know how I feel about people wearing belts, so I, I'm Very I'm pro, pro that. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I wasn't going to say it as a derogatory necessarily. It was just um, something that I think it, uh, as yeah. we said, it adds flavor where you can come up with stuff that feels natural. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, it's a tough if one though to the... because you gotta you gotta you gotta work really hard. Sometimes they can be really endearing. Sometimes they can be embarrassing or like cringe-inducing. It's, oh, uh, like speaking of that, fate, Brie, word. we watched yeah. Contagion, and it's clearly, yes. it's 2011, so they're, they're on the cusp of, I guess, uh, the mainstream Modern understanding internet the culture, internet better, yeah. and uh, ah. there is a internet-type character, and he's like, he's talking about how different things are happening and stuff, and he says, you know, this is all over the blogosphere, 
Oh like no! Logosphere. That word, logosphere. Yeah. I think it's um one of them is when a ca you remember in Age of Ultron when Vision refers to the internet as the net. It's like oof. I don't mm. think I've ever heard anybody say that in the last fifteen years. I was about to <laughs> say it's like the internet as the net. It did exist at one point as a reference, but like so few people picked up on saying it was the net. That's just not. It was yeah. kind of like if somebody says YOLO now. It's like oh fucking hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> and as Grandpa like, Simpson says, this will happen to you. And what it's <laughs> referencing is any of the popular thing that you put into your movie to hit cultural stuff. It's gonna become old. It's gonna become very old, unless you do it in a way that's like when, like when Bart goes to the arcade and he's playing the arcade games, and they have. Oh, it's funny. You remember the one when it was like, um, I think it was he was playing an go, arcade boy. game, and he he loses, and then George H. W. Bush says like drugs are bad, eh, eh, and just starts kicking the video game character. This is like, yeah, you could reference a president from 1998 through 1992, and it could be really funny. Well, what were you about to say? The, the irony of that is that that is a more reliable uh, thing to put into your uh, content that wouldn't make it age because there's a character who's clearly not internet savvy and uh, says like they're aware of something that's spreading and and the the word they just use is like it's spreading all over the internet and it's said as though it's like see they they don't really know the language but it's like no that's that's closer that's to what we would say <laughs> that's better. Better. yeah that's better and it's just it's just yeah it's kind of like um. It's kind of like when, uh, you know how, like, you have, like, uh, films that will do, like, sort of fake parody versions of, like, existing social media websites? That feels like another one that can, uh, really age a, a film. For intelligentsia. Uh, I, wow, that was, that was less than a year ago. <laughs> just you remember. edgy Reddit. That's what it was. <laughs> it was just edgy Reddit. And they all hate her despite her having been in existence for very little time. Uh, in their world, and all she's done is rescue some people from being killed. That's it. Yeah. It's funny, because I think people will be like, yeah, she hasn't existed very long in real life, and all of you guys hate her. It's like, no, it's, the show is terrible. Well, I hate the writing <laughs> in the show, not like the actual, because the person doesn't exist. Yeah. So, it's not very comparable. Thank you guys for so, oh, well, yeah, and thank you very much for that that message. I appreciate it. Um, I'm yeah, glad you enjoy Stuff that we put out here. That's what we're, we're gunning for, is to entertain and hopefully inform. Thanks guys so much for another year of great content, awesome guests, and not so great media, but some gems here and there. Love you all, Mootle, you gay. Aww. Yeah, there really are some gems here and there. Yeah. We got some good, we really do watch. There, there are good things that come out, never forget it. Making fun of bad stuff might be super fun, uh, but uh, there are actually legitimately, truly, uh, veritably, uh, good things that come out. So do not despair. How much sports could an esports e if an esport could esport? That's a good question. That's a really good <laughs> question. I think that's for the elders of our society to figure out. And good questions deserve good answers. Wasn't that what Jeff said, Jeff Winger? Yeah. <laughs> when he was running for president of the school. Uh, happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Solstice, Kwanzaa, Festivus, and New Year's, you massives. Thanks for another year of great content. Thank you. You know, thanks. The first time I heard about Kwanzaa, because now, you, Chatter, you reminded me of that, was in Futurama, the Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa bot. <laughs> and he has a little pamphlet that explains to people what it is. Because it's just isn't one of those like, ones What the like, hell what is Kwanzaa? Isn't that what the... Yeah, what I think that's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> Kwanzaa bot. How much? Oh wait, uh, everything is soy, everything is cringe, everything is woke, and you have to point it all out, all of the time. Also, howdy rags and others. Howdy! It is, it's the reverse Anita Sarkeesian attitude. On the other end. Mm. Everything is soy. <laughs> everything is soy. It's like <laughs> The Last of Us, instead of fungus, it's soy. It's, it's seeped into everything. <laughs> <laughs> In, um, people say like, you know, you know how like there's people who want to get access to sort of, um, I guess, minority status, but that they have unfortunately been cursed with being like straight, white, and even male. Right. But uh, they can they can opt in for non-binary whenever they want, and that's like access. And um, I saw that language is getting so fucking weird now that I saw someone say when they saw someone identify as non-binary, whether they were a straight white male, they described that as that's just soy woke. Like I'm, I, the world <laughs> confuses me. It's I'm like sorry. Soy 
woke. Wait, what? What if soy woke? <laughs> is that like a soy woke latte? That's gonna be <laughs> something that you can get at Starbucks, is it? It's hard to keep track of everything. It evolves so quickly. Well, especially nowadays, it's it's part of the reason why, by the way, I'm talking about the whole thing of, like, dating your film or TV show with references. Just avoid it completely now. Like, anything anything that you use as, like, a, as like a reference will be, like, dated in a year or two. You, you know, like, you, by the time that you film it in your scripts, like, you write it and then you shoot it, by the time it's out, it might already be too late. <laughs> Everybody says stuff like... Oh god, that's gonna age poorly. Or oh, that, that's so like entrenched in modern politics or modern social issues. Nobody ever says, "Hey, where are the references to to cis and woke and 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 racism and bigotry and stuff?" Like nobody ever says, "Like I need that in my well, nobody my advocates Western for order. it in your stuff." Yeah. So. Well, just it's it's like you said though. With each with each year, it seems to accelerate further and further and further. You know, like Snowflake at this point is a hyper fucking cringe. Oh. Things are cool. I hate when it shows it? up in like films. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, like whenever you hear it, it's just like oof. But again, like you know, three or four years ago, it was more accepted, and then it, it's just the same. It just keeps going with like every single every single piece of terminology. Don't do it. Reject, reject modern internet terminology. Embrace thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> find, find alternate words. Find words that don't age so badly. Edgy DC character of the week, murder machine. Look him up for a good laugh. Wanna, Was wanna... that a DC one? Apparently, if you want to pull that up, we can have a little look at him in a. Have second. you, uh, have you guys ever seen? It's, it's an interesting. Well, oh, it was DC murder machine, right? That was. Apparently, yeah. What was he called? M M Murder Machine, right? Pretty uh, funny. <laughs> is it meant to be like an evil Batman robot? It looks like. <laughs> also, it's like an evil or? edgy. Uh, well, let's see what it says on like one of the DC wikis. Um, so, so that's what he looks like. Uh, he's from an alternate, like he's from a from a different universe. Um, he's one of uh Barbados's Dark Knights. So, in the multi- this must have been recent then. Oh, yeah, this would have been, because it says Scott Snyder, so that would have been the, uh, the- Snyder. The, um, Dark Knights. No, Scott Snyder, comic book writer. Oh, he's just Batman um, Iron Man. Uh, yeah, but I think he's- he's- wait, is he a robot or is he, uh... Uh, oh, he's no, I think he's just a person. The murder he, machine. Uh, he has cybernetic enhancements, I see. The problem is that there's no, like, synopsis I've just got- Well, it is a synopsis of the history, but not, like, a nice statement. Um... Just yeah. a nice statement about- Oh, well, machine. this- this is something that he said. This is a quote from, uh, from this one. You were wrong, Vic, Cyborg. The best thing I ever did was let him in. I still remember the fear when they surrounded me. I realized quickly that my plan was not gonna work. I would not be able to affect the program in time, and when they grabbed onto me, started to spread through my entire body, I was foolish enough to scream in fear. That was the first thing my father fixed in me. He took my ability to feel fear away, my ability to feel sadness. You know, to the point that I had to spend, uh, that I had spent my life obsessing over my lost birth parents, ignoring the one who was right there in front of me. Uh, I was free of that as well. Next came my weak human flesh. It was growing older and more brittle by the day. That is the quote on, like, the DC, like, wiki. Which isn't very helpful <laughs> in terms of, uh... I guess he thought that his flesh was weak, and he needed to replace it with robot stuff to become cooler. Right, some real to... Omnisaya stuff right there. Damn it! I had something that was relevant that I've... Oh, yeah, yeah, now I remember. Have you guys ever seen... It was like, uh, I think it was a thing that they ran in the 90s where it'd be like... You'd have uh, Stan Lee there with like a comic book artist, you know, at Marvel. And it would just be like them, I think, answering like, you know, mailed in questions. Or, or it was like, um, they did... They talked while... Uh, the artist essentially sat down and designed, like, a character from scratch. And there's this one that has, um, it has, a uh, um, it's Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn, and, um, the guy who can't draw feet. What's his name? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I can't believe, uh, I can't believe I've forgotten his name. Uh, duh, 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 uh, come on. Um, uh... Oh, Rob Liefeld. That's right. You, you know, like the Captain America, the, the yeah. picture where like you can see like his. So they were designing a character, and they were designing him to be like super duper edgy. It was the nineties, all right, and it was hyper edgy. He had guns and swords and all sorts of stuff. These massive shoulder pads, and every single time, like Stan was like, 
asking him, like, so what does he do? Like, what's his job? What does he do for work? Or, like, what motivates him? He's asking all of these story questions, and they just don't really have any answers. It's just that he's really cool and edgy. Whereas, like, Stan wants to dig it into who the character is and, like, what, what he believes in and what he wants. And it's just this really fascinating video where you watch the contrast in, like, the methodology that he had to create in characters versus the predominant methodology in the early 90s, which was essentially how do we make him as cool and edgy as possible. It's so fascinating. I, sh I should make you guys watch that. It's a really fascinating, like, little, I've seen uh, it. Um, little video. It's in yeah. one of H. Bomber guy's videos from, like, five years back or something. Right. It's just, yeah. um, it doesn't surprise me that Stan Lee, given the attitude that he clearly has towards building characters, created so many characters that have an enduring legacy that people like. Because it's so clear that, like, a lot of his thinking is, well, what do I do to make them more human? What do I do to make them more, uh, empathetic or sympathetic? Like, what do they do that isn't their superhero stuff? Like, what is yeah, it that they, they do in their the, regular yeah. life that informs their superhero life? Like, you know, the setup for Peter Parker is like, that's a, that's a really good setup for a character, you know, being imbued with a sense of responsibility and being so imbued with it that he does it often to the expense of his own personal life. And that he often gets put in situations where he has to choose, am I going to do the right thing or am I going to do the thing that benefits me? And more often than not, he chooses the right thing. It's like, that's a really good setup for a character. It's no surprise that there's like so many stories about Spider-Man. Stan Lee. Spider-Man's like the super relatable superhero. Yes, he's, he's very quintessential. He's very much... Base plate that you would introduce people to the idea of superhero. Yeah, him, uh, Batman anybody, as well. Right? I think. Mm -hmm. I think um, Superman as well is another one. It's, it's the reason why it's those three, right? That everybody: Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Those are the three. Remember, but like uh, everybody is that of. I only just made myself re-aware of this, so that's why it's annoying me, but. Um, this will come out probably after the Dead Space remake comes out, so, you know, maybe it turns out that we're wrong on this. I seriously doubt it, though. Um, there was a tweet that was showing a clip from, I guess, some of the stuff they've released. Where Do you remember the part in Dead Space where you need to collect um, a shock pad and someone else to blow open a lock on a door, essentially? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the earlier missions. Yeah. Um, they, they're showing, like, you enter the room and Hammond is talking about, like, the problems or whatever, and then Isaac is like, I, uh, I can tell they've fashioned some kind of lock on this thing, and that uh, if I can just get this and this, I can break through it, and then Hammond says, um, you know, there's a good chance that lock is there to keep, not necessarily keep things out, but to keep something in, or something like that, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, so I see that clip, because there's a tweet surrounding it for criticism, and I was like, before I read whatever the criticism is, I'll just see the clip in isolation, and I was like, all right. My criticism, if anything, and it could be a bias, is just, and I don't like the old Hammond. New Hammond isn't quite, is, you know, and maybe I just need to play the whole game before I should really judge that. Uh, sure. Old Hammond, so to speak, classic Hammond, I guess. Uh, I quite like the desperation and the sense of uh, just trying to claw anything together to make it make sense in the game, in the original game. Yeah. The new one, he seems oh, yeah. a lot more confident and straightforward. Which, um... I always got the impression that Hammond was really competent. It's just that this situation is so confident. unlike, unlike yeah. what he's prepared for. Yeah. And anyway, he still is uh, able to like formulate a plan. He's a little exasperated. Sometimes he raises his voice when he's frustrated. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like he has a plan. He keeps things together. Do this, do this. Go here, go that. I'll do this while you do that. We'll meet up at this location. Like he's definitely a doer. He's goal oriented. And so I was like, I wonder what the criticism is. And the criticism was just, um, remember in the classic game where you could drink in this incredible atmosphere and now, just like every other modern game, they have people talking at you constantly. Talking at you constantly. So, um, so Hammond does talk at you in the original game. Like, yeah. he, in fact, he does talk at you because That whole scene Isaac is in the original talk. game. It's just that well, yeah, Isaac it's, doesn't it's suggest Isaac the... talks now. That's yeah, it. Isaac's the one that can now say the things that relate to engineering. I... I think that particular, I get the distinct impression that there are not going to be many additional conversations. The impression that I get in terms of the method they're going to have for the writing is that Isaac just talks now in the conversations that already happen. I think I the only extra conversations we might get are between Isaac and Nicole, yes. Yeah, like whenever she sends him a radio, like a message through the intercom that he'll be like, Nicole, well, you know, uh, is that you? What I assume you guys noticed as well is that it's, um... Get talked out a lot in the game. A lot of messages come Dead through. Space for Isaac. Has plenty of uh, yeah. Um, Dead Space has plenty of dialogue. On uh, the opening to any message, uh, will often it'll be without warning and it'll go 
country before. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, okay, okay, Jesus. <laughs> like, it's like, um, yeah. And yeah, part of that is to set, like, you know, there's a dark, long corridor. It's mostly quiet, except the churning of, like, the ship and maybe some ambient soundtrack stuff. And then, <laughs> Isaac, you need to get it. It's like, it, it all, I think, melts together in a really good way. The only change being, of course, that you now speak, but it's usually in response to things. And then we've seen from the fucking videos, there's going to be extended pieces of the game with nobody's talking. Of the game with no talking. Let's can, game's not even out yet. Can we just like wait a little bit, please? Well, I, I quote tweeted the first. thing and said, "Do people forget that Hammond, Kendra, Nicole, Mercer, and Kine all give you explanations and instructions throughout the original? I doubt they're yep. going to have non-stop dialogue in the remake. Like this is getting weird. And a lot of people were talking about like, yeah, the whole like shit on anything modern gaming is the getting like, really cringy." Which seems to be because of all the Forspoken stuff. It's like, oh, like, I, I think I told you, Mola, there are people like, I miss silent protagonists. It's like, like, can we, if it was well written, nobody, nobody hated that Mimir talked. Nobody was upset that Mimir talked to you. It's because he had interesting things to say. Yeah, the writing was good. Yeah. If the dialogue is good, you enjoy it. I don't, like, does anybody look at, like, Jack and Dax to, to Jack 2 and go, man, it was really lame when Jack started talking. I feel like nobody had that perspective. It's just like, oh, Jack talks well, someone now. Someone said to them, like, Jack and Dax hate, talk to each other. You hate Dead Space 2 then, because that's when he started talking, and then the person yeah, responded like, talking. no, he didn't talk anywhere near as much as he's clearly talking in this remake. Uh, he talks a lot in Dead it? Space 2. <laughs> Do you see what I mean, yeah, though? It's just like, <laughs> man, you guys are just, like, just trying to fucking bank on, like, the modern just... trends. I don't know, man, like, it makes... What is the what is the real argument against Isaac n not talking being the better choice? What it's is the argument? that he doesn't talk. It is He's weird. A Especially he replaying the game recently. There things. are several moments where you're like, he should seriously be saying something He should here. be saying something to Nicole. Like, it's... at the very least... It's kind of funny that Nicole, uh, sorry, Kendra, um, when, when the game is progressing in the finale, right, she's like, yeah, yeah. I, I've betrayed the thing, I've done the thing, goodbye, Isaac, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you press the buttons to pull you back. She's like, Isaac, you son of a bitch, like, you, you, blah, blah, blah. And then you come back down, you set up the marker, then she's like, Isaac, did you really think I was gonna let, like, like, she's giving you all of these, like, progressions, as if, almost as if you're talking back, but you're sort of just, like, yeah. sat in this silent, like, you don't know me. <laughs> like, well, you don't know why I do anything. Well, the most you got, right, when the reveal is that Nicole is dead, you just have Isaac like going like uh you know like putting his hand yeah. on his head it's like imagine if it, what we see in the remake where he'll probably like actually be like incredibly distraught that's the thing that's what and we'll just, like, be looking at it'll be for, really cool to see that. him like well and especially because you know like when you go up to the uh when you go up to like the control room with nicole shortly after like kendra steals the ship and like every single screen is displaying all of this like marker text and everything it'll be interesting to see like what isaac says when he tries to you know figure that out like, all of that information. Or just, like, how he's going to react to a lot of things, right? Like, maybe he'll well, even have the... something to say about the whispering in his ear, like, whenever he's walking around in new areas. Even the smallest of changes, man. Like, uh, even The Last of Us, right? I was on uh, doing the open bar catch-up, and I was... Uh, you know, a lot of people saying, I prefer the game version of Sarah dying, I prefer the... Well, I've seen some people say they prefer the show version, but I was just, like, to offer something, like... You know, having that one line, but sir, there's a little girl, I think... Is an improvement. It's so small, but it's so uh, useful in terms of uh, letting yes. you know exactly what the situation is in a more than subtle way, because that is that is absolutely what a person may say in that scenario, and the, the soldier's not going to be used to killing people, all that stuff. And then it's like, on the other end, having uh, Joel desperately call out for Tommy when he's holding a, you know, bleeding, it's like, is that is that an improvement? It's like, it might be, actually. I quite like that they put that in there, because that's just, Joel doesn't know what to do. Uh, you know, and he's calling out for someone, and then just having Tommy just be like, you know, that that's it, man. She's dead. Uh, you know, like tiny, tiny choice, like one I'll word have changes. Real conversations about these things, though. You know, not um, like it's different, and therefore it's worse. It's like I don't know. Oh, I just, everyone's so ready to say like, oh, they're shoving all the dialogue into a Dead Space one. They're gonna ruin it. And it's like, calm down. There is shit tons that's of dialogue in Dead Space we... one. So yeah, first of all, there's tons of dialogue in Dead Space one, and moreover. I look forward to all of the, you just, you know, like going, it's like, oh yeah, no, there's actually like ton, it's all the same dialogue. Like it's all the same scenes, you know? Like I get the impression that there's not going to be like additional scenes of dialogue, that every single time it's going to be the same dialogue just rewritten now to contextualize. Way. I just want to approach it with good faith enough. for fuck's sake, you know? Uh, let, I don't know, can we give the game a chance for fuck's sake? <laughs> like, it's funny because we, um... we just give it a shot? 
I've seen the idea that it's like, well, Callisto Protocol was shit, so why do we have hope for this? Like, why do you... Um, are completely different games. They're, like, they're completely they're different developed games people. developed by different people. And <laughs> fundamentally, this game is going to be built off of the framework of something really good, whereas Callisto Protocol seems to have only been in name only. Only been in name only. <laughs> I just typed uh, in Dead Space, and uh, the sixth result is I have completely lost faith in this remake. I The, the one thing what? that I've seen that's been particularly embarrassing is people like, ah, the women, they don't look as hot anymore. It's like, I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. Sorry, like, man, what? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm I, sorry I, I, that I, I, happened. Like, I, I hope you'll be okay. This? I hope you'll so, make so it. Maybe I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but, like, the fact that, like, female characters in video games and male characters, too, look more like real people, I prefer that. I, I do, it, yeah. I, I, think, I think it looks better. I, I, I buy these people exist more because it's just like, I don't know, man, you're not, like, a supermodel. You're not, like, absolutely symmetrical face. Like, everything is absolutely, you know, like, narrowed into this very, like, narrow perspective of what, you know, what people look like. The more that we've have like people this... who look like regular what people were sending me messages about what you're talking about now it kind of makes more sense they were asking everyone's asking me what i think of what nicole looks like in the remake i said i had nicole seen looks it. like the actress she who plays like her actress. she looks like she a looks woman like i don't the know actress what to say who played her in dead space too what are you she looks like a woman about... she looks like a real Sorry. person and like it's just like isn't isaac he's not he's not young like isaac is not like a young guy i'm pretty sure well, that isaac got, in the first got, game uh, is in his 30s he's got 40s. grayish hair isn't he in some parts of his hair yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that isaac by like dead space 3 is in his mid to late 40s he's fairly old uh all things considered it's just i i, I don't know what i'm meant to do with that where it's just like it's like first of all she's not ugly like i think i think that if, if like you were looking at her and saying she's ugly it's like man your perceptions of like like what you're doing like what beauty is and like very very <coughs> abnormal and like excessive i don't well, like, the, I, I would just rather cut to the chase Let, yeah let's say she's a fucking hyper ugly person oh my god hideous what is that so the game what does that bad? mean well is these are like the people who are coping good? by saying you know? brie larson isn't attractive i yeah but people still cope with that one they still say that she isn't it's like i don't know what i'm meant to do with that i just think that that's i'm absurd. more than happy to agree if everyone's going to agree that we base it not on looks exclusively we also go for personality traits well sure but of, i want people to like, basically around. caveat yeah, that's that, what we're, you know yeah like, that's what i think the brie larson isn't attractive but to be fair i totally dislike your personality it's like yeah. well at least you've provided that caveat yeah. kind of follows a bit more i guess that's the thing that just i find it it's the same thing that happened with aloy and it was really stupid it's like Aloy doesn't look like a supermodel. <laughs> like, it almost felt like that was the claim that was being made. It's like, no, she looks like a real person. She looks like a person that I can, like, imagine Also, Aloy existing. looks very attractive. Let's yes, be clear that, that would be that like, would be the hyper meme as well. If you think that, like, Aloy is presented in that game is ugly, it's like, your standards are absurd. You're insane, like, yeah. You need to, like, stop watching, like, the highest top tier, most produced fake-ass porn you could possibly find. And it's look just, at something that isn't just a some I don't know cover girl model. Well, it's like she's not wearing makeup. It's like yeah, because she's living in the fucking post apocalypse. Like I don't know. Like Dude, I prefer women doesn't... without makeup. I just so this this is the one that's causing problems for people in terms of a super ugly woman. She I, looks like a woman who's just she older. Looks, she just looks older. That's it. She looks older than maybe. Yeah, I would aim for nothing about this that's unattractive. Possibly mid to late thirties, I guess. I'm not hundred. Maybe even maybe early forties. Maybe yeah, probably early forties. It look, but like, gals, listening to this. If that, if you end up looking like that, man, you should not good feel job. bad. Yeah, yeah like you, you really. I don't, don't know. This is just a moment for me of like, bad. you're gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be okay. Let's 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 take a yep. look at their mechanics. Let's take a look at the sound design, the atmosphere. Let's just de delve into how they've changed the balancing on credits and resources. Mm -hmm. You know, let. I don't care if Nicole. Looks <laughs> looks a bit older. He Which, looks like an older yeah. version of the Nicole that we had. Yeah, pretty much. And 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 if somebody like I don't see why you would bring I don't see why you would bring Isaac's voice back without bringing her back if she's up for it and willing to do it. Like that just doesn't seem very fair to me at all. And so like I imagine that there's that as well. It's like well yeah we'll bring her back and put her in the game too just like we did with Isaac. But people have been complaining about that too that Isaac looks different now. Like, I, I don't feel like there's a real argument for that one either. Like, Isaac looks pretty haggard in, like, Dead Space 2 and 3, but that's after everything that's happened. Like, that's after an, a, a lot of really bad and stressful experiences compared to, like, where he would be in the first game.
I, I just find it all very superficial, I guess. That's, like, my problem with it. It's just like, I don't know, man, this seems like a weird thing to get fixated on. Yeah, I would just prefer... Oh, God, I do, I do hate discussions. <laughs> the surrounding. Yeah, I I'm mean, like, can we talk ew. about the mechanics? Can we talk about the changes in the writing and whether we think that they enhance or detract from the broader experience? Latching on to that. And why are we rooting against this game? I want it to come out and be really cool, and then there might be more Dead Space games. I thought we all yeah, agreed. We kind that, of, I thought we all. There's a lot of good that. that can come from this being successful. Well, I mean, what we saw, with, right, with Resident Evil Two being successful, is why this game even exists in the first place. That's one of the cited reasons, is that they saw that Resident Evil 2 was successful and EA were like, maybe it is viable to make a strict, like, survival horror game nowadays. Um, and especially now that Callisto Protocol, like, kind of blew up, like, n not in a good way. <laughs> um, mm. Now it feels like uh, this game is in a position to, to, to like, shine. And I've, I've watched, like, the interviews with the developers and the writers, and, and it all, like, leaves me feeling pretty positive. Like, a lot of it just feels like, I feel like you guys really care, and that, like, the decisions that you're making here are pretty thoughtful. Like, you're not just making haphazard decisions, or trying to morph it into your own thing. You're basically trying to take the core and then, expa and, and then like, build on it, and, and just update it and tweak it. Well, like I said, uh, we will have played it by the time this comes out, so. By the time this comes out, yeah. You and guys I know what happened. Either. Hopefully it was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I hope I, uh, I, hope I enjoyed yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, press O to abandon daughter must appear somewhere. Whom they may be referencing Goodell. Oh, the ghost of, uh, the, the, what was it? Was that Chains of Olympus? Oh, yeah, it's or which Chains one? of Olympus, yeah. but I, I assume they mean they wanted to show it up in... Oh, uh, that's a meme. Like, press zero to, ab <laughs> press that shit is to a, abandon daughter. That was wild. What a bad idea that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 there was oh. a Jedi named I'm a gonna die. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am a space G U N A space D I. I'm a gonna die. <laughs> Song is Who Likes to Party by Kevin McCloyd. Good. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but yeah. I play those when we do party phone. Life has many doors, Ed Boy. <clears throat> if you guys were all stuck on a desolate island and the food was running short, w uh, who would be first on the menu? Also, Happy New Year, Rags. Oh, hey there. If Happy it New were Year. us three, um, it would it would have to depend on the chances of rescue. If it was like we we these would be rescued in a week, but we have no food left. It's like oh shit, one of us might have to die for the other two to. Live. Oh, if you don't have food, oh no, you'll live a week. Um, oh, sorry, I guess, yeah, because you'd have to have water for that to work anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah, mm. as long as you had water, you'll live, uh, three a days without water, without three weeks yeah. without food, three minutes without yep. oxygen. Yep. Is it three minutes? I didn't it's know. About, right. it's, that's about the meme, yeah, like, that it's, well, because I think people can go for longer without oxygen, and it depends on the nature of the asphyxiation too, right? Is it a complete loss of oxygen, or are you just getting a small amount of oxygen? Well, then what if it was two weeks? Uh, well, two uh, you weeks. Could, probably, as long as you had water, you'd probably be okay. Three yeah. weeks. Uh, Three weeks is pushing Probably, it. but that's starting... When you get to the end of that third week, that's when it's really getting super shaky. And so four weeks, then. You dead. You probably dead. Well, yeah. that's the question. If it were us three on a desert island, we knew it would be rescued in four weeks. Uh, I think we'd all agree that one of us needs to die so the others can live. I don't know. I, don't I feel know. like it would just be who dies first. That would be that would probably be the nature of it. <clears throat> I'd imagine that we uh we would either agree fuck it we'll all die or yeah uh that we would have a very rational discussion about the, the nature of the future of all Could of our we lives. even have a rational discussion? Couldn't we get like stranded on the food? island with like wings of redemption or something? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so we can just live forever. <laughs> I don't think they would last that long. It'll it'll rot, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I would just, my consider would be like, is there a way we can find to kill someone in a nice way here? Is it, with this I, Like I said, have? I think you just wait until somebody dies, and then the, whoever that is, whoever dies first, rather than it being about killing anybody, I, that feels to me like the choice that would be the least. Well, the interesting just... aspect of that too is that that'll keep your food for longer, technically, right? Uh, yeah. 
I suppose, yeah. Would you say no, Rex? I said yeah. Oh, right, okay. Uh, if you... Oh, wait, that's that one, yeah. Uh, Jamiroke reference? I guess the future isn't made of virtual insanity after all. It does, however, seem Romaquai. to be governed... Romaquai. Romaquai. By this love we have for useless twisting forms of subjectivity. We're not living underground yet. Huh, speak for yourself. Living underground's hey. really... Living underground. What, like in Metro? I mean... I'd be curious about, like, because you guys, have you seen 12 Cloverfield Lane? I have. I like the idea of, like, someone, a story about someone who's just so obsessively doom preppy that they have, like, an entire, like, a thing that maybe their dad started building long ago and then they finished up and they're in their 50s now, whatever, and, like, an, a really long elevator and there's a staircase version of it as well for safety, but it's, like, an enormous facility below ground that they built really slowly over a long time that the government never found, you know, and that just like the like Dex's lab sort of thing, yeah. And then maybe a zombie outbreak happens or whatever, and uh, you have that scenario of he's he's kind of a normal guy living a normal life, but he drags one person in to save them when it's, it was designed to just be him because he's like a loner. And then they have their family come, and that family lets people know about it, and so he ends up with like maybe fifty people down there. What kind of what kind of stories you could tell with that? So, mm. yeah. Uh, Mister Mime hates. And then they've got uh, riggers, which is, which is a person who rigs things. Well, yeah, one who rigs, one who's like the rigging on a ship and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Outriggers. I didn't person. know that about Mr. Mime. Damn. Bigoted. I'm uh, just thinking about that time when I thought that when Rag said he was good at orienteering, he meant I was good at like holding orientations for like people at a new job <laughs> or something. Maybe he is I good at that. <laughs> I, may, I, I probably would be good at that, but I'm not. I think you'd be pretty good. I think that's the reason why I, I, I like believe that that's what you meant. I'm like, yeah, I could see Rags being pretty good at Ori, Ori like conducting Hello, orientation. Edge Runners was mid. Oof. I haven't seen it. I can't say. I've not seen it either. Happy New Year, EFAP! Uh, just a recommendation to go watch Puss in Boots, The Last Witch in... Witch? Damn it. Wish in theaters while you can. It's one of the best movies this year and another banger entry in the Shrek franchise. You know what? Agreed. Yeah. It is I probably one of the best movies. I'm glad to have seen it. So, <laughs> 2023 off to an okay start, I guess. Well, oh, that yeah, was absolutely. 2022 ended. Oh, with right. That, of course. So, uh, count. I guess, uh, what is the best movie of 2022, then? Uh, everything ever all at once feels like the the choice. So, because it would be competing, like we would have it competing, not the Oscars, obviously. But with uh, the, I think Puss in Boots would be, I would, be, I would be happily putting it up there to contend. Um, especially after talking about it on the Forge with Metal and Meme, like that film raised in my estimation. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about it more, yeah, I think that film is is a contender. Happy 2023! Have you considered making any content comparing the two Pinocchios of 2022? The Guillermo del Toro version and the one uh, is one of the best animated movies I've seen in a while. The Disney one exists. I don't want to watch I the Disney one. I have not seen the Disney one. I don't want to see it. Maybe we'll do a Pinocchio not arc where we compare a whole bunch of Pinocchios. Mm. Mm. Not, yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> There's probably all kinds of different like especially day, old like t past seventies eighties versions that are live action. One day I'll suggest an arc that Green will be excited about. It'll happen. Efap anime Bible Black. Bible Black anime? What? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, mid doesn't mean middle. It's a weed reference. Oh, I'm sorry, my dude. It's way more than that now. It does mean middle. <laughs> yeah. Like. It does mean metal. Doesn't matter where it came from, it's evolved now to mean the thing isn't terrible, but it also isn't great. It's somewhere in the middle. Uh, I meant okay when I said mid. Finland Saga is what you should watch. Yeah, that's middle. It's okay. Yeah. Well, then again, someone might say middle is neutral and the okay is like a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I've always felt that way. Okay implies a little a level of positivity. <clears throat> yeah, like, okay so, yeah. kind of makes you think of a thumbs up. It's like, yep. Which yeah. is better than nothing. Uh, better than neutral. Uh, Kick Duma. He's the new J with these takes. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. I think, I think this is the point where Duma starts saying things. Oh goodness. Um, eject Duma. <laughs> eject. <laughs> Not uh, even kick, just eject. 
Is a Pokemon a fursona? No. Only if you like use it as a fursona, which is kind of basic and lazy, but um but no, they're not. Uh, I saw Avatar 2 and couldn't stop thinking that Jake's plan to escape the military was the same as Homer's plan to escape the media in Homer Bad Bad. <laughs> what, what is the, the plan in Homer Bad Bad? Is that... How does he... Because I, I, my brain is going to when they try to escape that song that ends up on the radio about Flanders. The, uh, William Shatner ends up doing a spoken weird vision. Oh, the, uh... Oh, damn it. What was it? It was, uh... uh yeah, I can't remember the lyrics. Everybody in the yeah, hates to that's right. And then they did a Spanish rendition, right? Like a Latin. Yeah, then William Shatter is like everybody in the USA. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Stupid. The fact that Ned Flanders, uh, Ned Flanders, <laughs> he's enjoying it. Song. He sings along. Of course, with of course it. he does. I I remember loving that episode, but uh, that's not the one they're talking about. What does he do in response to the the like sexual allegation stuff in Homer Badman to escape them? Well, remember he goes on. Uh, he goes on rock bottom. <laughs> well, they, they said <laughs> the it's uh, Jake's plan is similar to Homer's, so I don't think they're referencing the rock bottom. Wait, Jake, who story? Avatar. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think because Homer, like, I I can't re I I'm not sure actually what that what like run away from everything. Is that what Homer does? Because I remember the. I remember when they take photos of him while he's in the shower and he like screams and falls over. Oh, and that what the one of the guys says that the 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 thing that you know that's the top or whatever you would call it, like it's the, his the, like the shield charging sexual powers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there Giving was him the, sexual the, powers. The movie. <laughs> The movie, and yeah. it's like, no, Mr. Simpson, a cat is a living creature. I don't care. <laughs> Spins over to run it over, goes out of his way, Didn't and then that... Ben. Yeah. Family Guy have a similar joke, if you remember when um, when Joe Swanson and, and Peter are trying to compete in the Special Olympics, and for some reason the movie adaptation, like, basically Peter doesn't get any credit for all the work he's doing, and the movie adaptation has Peter even saying, like, you're a fool, Joe, a fool, to think you could do, like, the Special Olympics. I wonder if that was inspired. There are it videos was, on YouTube uh, of like all the jokes that have serious, suspicious crossover from Family Guy from uh, from Simpsons. Well, South Park did the Special Olympics where Cartman pretended that he was uh, that he was that he was mentally retarded or whatever to like get into the Olympics so that he could win. But the problem was that all of the kids who were disabled. Like, they were all better athletes than he was. It was, like, the one element of his plan that he forgot, which is that, like, all of these people have actually been training for this and are, like, athletic. <laughs> and then they beat him. And then he got an award for losing. And that was when Jimmy was, like, he pretended to, like, have a disability so that you could get into the Special Olympics. Do you remember how, like, when he walked up to Kyle, like, doing his little impression, where he's like, dang, dang, and Kyle was like, god damn it, dude, like, yeah. I hate you so much. I, th I think it was Stan who said that. It's like, I think this is a really, really bad idea, or a really sweet one. Oh, wait, no, that was a different episode. That was when he dropped himself into a, a tub with a T-bow that would electrocute him and, and fill his brain with memories of 1776 so that he didn't have to write a report. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> I was just that thinking was... Um, that song Hobo wrote is still in my head. I was just thinking the lyrics. The uh, Flanders tried to wreck my song. His views on birth control are wrong. It's like Homer wrote that. <laughs> like, Homer wrote that Flanders is wrong about birth control. <laughs> like his views on policy related to it. Um, and he says that he'd like to see that... his house go up in flames. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Do you remember right. he goes? Uh, it's like it's like F L A N R D S. His name is He's Ned. The man that I hate best. Yeah. It's like it, he just spelled out Flanders. <laughs> well, yeah, because I had F L A. His name is Ned E R S. It's like you skipped you skipped a few letters there. It's a catchy joke. It was a fun song. Yeah, it's just dumb as fuck. Um, remember the the song the Mo song Mo Mo Mo. How, How do you like, like me? me? How do you like me, Mo Mo Mo? Why don't you like me? Nobody, Nobody likes me. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh the these old men are just reminisce in rags. Don't you worry. No, it's fine. Yeah. I'm happy to allow you to reminisce and talk about your TV shows from the olden days, the yeah. programs of yore. Times they were a different.
the before times, yeah. Was watching Critical Drinkers Open Bar 31. Just want to say, F off, Hollywood. Start reading the source material, Witcher and Rings. Don't push messages. M she you. Make interesting characters. Most shows. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm heavy into the make interesting characters part. Hell yeah. We like it, interesting characters. Maybe we should start with make characters, actually. Yeah, just just start with making characters. Go easy on the... <laughs> we yeah, don't we'll refine to... them as we get the basics down. Uh, Jake slash Homer, pack your bags, we're starting a new life under the sea. Little baby theme plays, Naterian Barge. Oh, that's your plan for everything. Okay, I can see the connection now, actually, yeah. The... They, they even have, like, a musical there before it, and then I think at the end, Homer just says, like, oh, it won't work going under the sea. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, probably won't. Um, Star Wars is handled by people who are uncaring and cynical. Andor clearly had someone who cared. I wish they would just start caring again. You and me both, man. Absolutely. It comes through. You can't fucking hide it. The, when, you, when you phone it in, you end up with shit like the, the production line equivalent, which is Kenobi and Boba Fett. I'm sure that um, uh, Ewan McGregor kid, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Timur Morrison really kid, but um, it's, it's, he got yeah. really bad shit to work. Yeah, with. Yeah, what well, can an actor? Oh, people say like an actor can yeah. elevate materials. Much as I agree, can an actor do anything when the material is fucking dog shit though? Uh, there's act... only so much, you know. You know. I mean, yeah, the best you can get is that you acted a really bad character well. And I mean, there, there are moments in the Kenobi show where we we were like, "Oh, look at him!" Yeah, you're acting. working real hard. It's a shame. Uh, I bet the list of things Duma likes is the signal digits. Oh, in the single digits, it might be. Might even defend that. This is Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Uh, horror movies do suck, though. Predictable as hell, except for the parody movies. Seriously? You guys have commentary for this? Except for the... <laughs> so again, the parody movies of what? Horror movies suck. Predictable as hell, except for the parody movies. That's a bizarre thing to say. Yeah. I, 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 um, horror I'm movies sure just suck. Like, a lot of them suck, but a lot of them don't. And some t a lot of parody movies of them suck, and a lot of them don't. The Where first you thing you say is like, so... Um, you like, hey, Alien? They're just trying to run for famous horror movies that everyone basically says are amazing. I don't know. You know this applies to everything, right? Medium and genre. There's examples of amazing and terrible things. Like, as much as the horror genre maybe has more obvious stagnation than other genres, uh, it's... I don't know. I feel like you could say it for almost everything, right? Like, the adventure genre is boring. They always go to places... But I don't know. Yeah, uh, like that's just a weird thing to say. Um, good games, no cutscenes. Every game that lets you skip them. Okay. Um, who would say that? I don't know. I don't know who would say that. Uh, who would ever say that? This one says debates are gay. I wonder what was happening at this point to make someone debates say that. Debates are gay. Probably some gay debate. Uh, talk about Rings of Power. We did that for like no, five episodes. No, we did a lot of that. Something. We. We we talked about that more than it deserved. <laughs> we talked about that. That had a longer arc than most things do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and when season two happens, uh, well, we'll have to make the decision you know? if we want to which format we want to do, right? Because uh, maybe we could do EFAP TV for it, or ooh, yeah, right. I think in retrospect, Ring season one wouldn't have been good for EFAP TV, but I think it worked pretty well as a thing where we bring on people to discuss it. Man, is it? It's a um, a complete coincidence. We were just talking about it, but someone posted that in the Discord, and I'm like, "Oh, shut up, shut up." Book of Boba Fett wasn't that bad. It's underrated. No, it is oh, correctly rated if, as horribly yeah. bad. If anything, it's still overrated. Yeah. God, that final episode with the rancor and the oh, machines dude. and the blasters, and Mando yeah. and him running around. It's like, oh, it's so fucking. I don't want to call it fan service because I don't think the fans are serviced by this. Yeah. This shit. Uh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we'll open with this is so dumb. I think I know what's happening now. Send Duma to the Shadow Realm. No need to put people in the Shadow Realm. 
Extreme. Yeah, we don't need to be doing that. You must claim most games barely have story. Timestamp roughly five hours and four minutes. That's a definitive claim that I would expect the group to have a lot of discussion on. Claiming he made no definitive claims is just untrue. Uh, yeah, that pissed off a lot of people, I think. Uh, especially, wasn't two of his examples Zelda and Mario, which is probably a mistake. Zelda was the worst one he could have chosen out of those two, though, because, like, Zelda has a story. It has a story that a lot of people really like. Well, I was going to say, yeah, um, the, but at least with Mario, a lot of people, nobody's, like, making videos about how Mario... Even then, story... like, Mario does have a story. It's just it a very basic one. Yeah. And then you have the likes of Super Mario Galaxy that has, like, Rosalina's, you know, the stories that she's telling, like, the picture book. And, and, and like, the fact that that game actually has cutscenes, like, full-blown cutscenes, and kind of, like, broad narrative, uh, like, uh, objectives... A lot of Mario games don't, obviously, but like Zelda in particular is just that one is kind of baffling. Uh, Duma, can you give me an example of good stories from movies? Movies made on Earth don't count. I don't care about them. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's that, that. I mean, you could still answer that question if you just to see where it could go. Uh, dude, you asked for examples and you said your examples don't count because you don't care about them. That's not how examples work. I'd be inclined to agree. Yeah, how about that? Duma, you should sit down and try and EFAP this conversation. It'd make for some great content. Perhaps. Oh boy. I, I'm not. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh, Duma gets too worked up in arguments. Jesus fucking Christ. It was Well, I, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I was worked up as well. <laughs> but I'd had a lot to drink, okay? Uh, Duma, you disregarded the examples you asked for. That is their only issue. Floompy. You don't want to be called Floompy. Oh. Don't be Floompy. Nope. Play Soma, Fringy. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Also, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll get on to that. Oh, the next one says, don't play Soma, Fringy. Also, by Rags. Well, I don't like that, Super Chat. <laughs> All wrong. It's uh, after rewatching the EFAB coverage of the Halo show, I bought the MCC. The wasted potential of the Elite's Humans Alliance in Halo 4 is infuriating. Uh, oh, I don't care as much about whatever than Halo 4, but y yes, there, there was a lot of wasted potential. Um, yeah. Uh, if he dislikes story in games, ask him why he plays heavy story games like Cyberpunk. Why doesn't he just stick with games like Minecraft? I suppose we will never know. Perhaps. Suppose we won't. Spirited is so terrible that I'm shocked anyone would recommend it. It's remarkably unoriginal, desperately unfunny, and utterly fails at finishing any of the narrative threads it pretends to start. Uh, alright. I'm not familiar with it. I heard they were starting to film a feudal Japan predator movie. Oh. That'd be cool as shit. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. That sounds really cool. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Imagine a good. fight between a samurai <laughs> and a predator. Well, Robert Rodriguez's is uh, Predators has a moment like that as a Yakuza guy with a samurai sword, I think. Thanks for another year yes, of looking at the terrible state of media. Hi, Rags. Don't cry metal, and I stole Fringy's goo. Um, no, hi. you didn't. It's all um, labeled and accounted for in yeah. the vault. Do the Navi have rabies? I, I don't think so. I don't know. Rabies it, might it not even like, exist on that planet. It seems like there's like no illnesses in, in that yeah, world. Yeah, they don't have any illnesses. Food is plentiful. They don't have any problems whatsoever. It's an idyllic uh, existence in yeah. harmony with the planet. And Humanity ruined it. Technology is the enemy. They killed Earth, and now they're going to kill Pandora with the evil metal. Wires. Hate it. Dead Space Remake, get your pants ready. Oh, I am ready. Before it. Oh, I am absolutely ready. When does it come out? Tomorrow? I mean, this will date the video, so. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's have a look-see. Is it preloadable for people? That would that'll be a signal that's about ready, right? Uh, it is, it is preloadable, yeah. Well, there you go. Oh. Uh, you guys were fun tonight. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's to you. 
Enjoyed the stream, been hitting the hay. Good night, hosts, guests, and chat. Love y'all and hope 2023 does not fimble the glimble. Yeah, we wouldn't want that. Uh, are you done with the annual Supermassive gameplay? Really enjoyed you guys riffing on those derpy games. So me and Metal, we had six games to fully stream, and the average completion time for those, all of them, were 10 hours. So... That was 60 hours of streaming outside of all the other streaming we had planned. We couldn't fit in. I, th I think I even said, if we manage to complete them in time, then we'll play the Supermassive games after. But, you know, me and Mel have plenty of time to stream those. And likely going to visit again, so we'll probably play them then. They are they are movie games, okay? The, 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 like, as much as I love the meme, that, that I, I'm more than understanding of calling them movie games. But they are funny, so yes, we may get around to them. Remake Isaac Clark reminds me of Father Dougal Maguire from Father Ted. I mean, talking about the way he looks? I suppose so, the way he looks. Because the remake, uh, Isaac looks, you know, more like Gunnar Wright. Oh, it's, uh, I know the actor's name. Um, he was in My Hero. British pro. I don't really see his face in him, but fair enough. Mola, play Neighbors from Hell. It's the perfect assault and battery game. Keep, uh, oh, keep it up, I guess. I love y'all. Soy and woke vids and streams. Happy birthday, everyone. Yeah, that's what the new year is. It's happy birthday for everyone. Happy birthday. And, uh, you're having fun with this stuff. Happy New Year's, you tisms and high rags for the last time of 2022. Oh, hello. I still find it amusing there are people who post every once in a while being like, can someone explain this whole high rags thing? Like, yeah. You know, as much as the stat of like replacing cells and everything, it'd be curious to know how often the average time you replace your audience, audience replacement, right? I guess it depends yeah. on growth, but... Probably. You know. No, yeah, quickly it happens and... Like familiarity much? with EFAP episodes will likely move with like a full 50 episodes, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. But there's the earlier days. But, um, yeah. Also, I, uh, it is a little, I'll be right back. Very well. Um, that's funny because that's it. <laughs> that's all it's Oh, it's at, it's at the end. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Well, we... thanks, thanks for the super chats, guys. Like, we... Yeah, yeah, appreciate what, it. We... Thank you so much. It, was, yeah. it is the New Year ones. Uh, so no, let's 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 end it, and then when Rags guys and because you, you'll be in on it, but Rags won't. <laughs> he'll just be like, "Yeah, see you, everybody," and then when Rags gets back after we're finished, he'll be like, "Yeah, so next super chat." Oh, and he'll be funny be for anybody but us too, though. No one will know. It, that's that's true, but they know now that that's a possible. And you, but you've deprived them now. It seems. It seems you want us to wait. I I don't know anymore. I feel like it's mean to not wait for him. Uh, but we miss out on that meme. But we. What are we? Only what, me what, and what, you. what is we can... it? Mean for the sake of a meme, or or not mean, but for the sake of no meme. I think it know? will actually harm Rags mentally not to be able to say goodbye to the nice people at home. Okay. Well. All right. I suppose we'll just wait then. Can't take that risk. But I will say, uh, we're getting there, Focarinos, listening to this. Yes. We're getting close to being caught up. 90,000 sure. words once upon a time is down to 11k now. And the funny thing is, <laughs> God, are, when it used to be that high. We are on the cusp of being halfway to the anniversary. Isn't that insane? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Man, that, that is actually pretty nuts. God damn. It was like yesterday that we did that. Insane. It was. It feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, because we've done. Damn. And the thing is, like, the episode's going to be pouring out because we've got so much stuff to talk about. I don't even know, like, once we finish The Last of Us as a show, I wonder if we'll do an episode for that, just... I hope that's good, by the way, future people. The Last of Us show, as I do with basically everything, hope that it's good. <sighs> oh, Mando season three. That's, oh, that's, that's pretty close, honestly. That's, that's the beginning of March. Yeah, like two months away, and, and by the time that comes out, The Last of Us will be finishing, right? Um, The Last of Us will be finishing probably while it's... Because The Last of Us is nine episodes, so two in, further dating <laughs> this. Uh, means we got seven, so seven more weeks. 
Which means it sounds like it'll like it'll, it'll finish right before. Uh, uh it, I think it will finish like the one or two weeks into Mando. Dude, everyone is gonna have their eyes on that finale that comes out. Every yeah, week. it'll it'll finish like one or two weeks. Uh yes, the finale is the interesting thing, isn't it? In terms of uh, <laughs> in terms of what are you gonna do to the ending, guys? What have you done. But, like I said, hope what good. if they I hope actually to... write everything though to where like they can set that up and it's okay? I, uh, dude, if if they actually like, if if it ends up being that we conclude it was a really good season and like everyone does, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Best of luck to him, of course. I am back. Well, that's it, folks. We've caught up fully <laughs> yeah, with the oh my New God. Year's Eve stream super chats. Thank you for joining All us. Right. Thank you very much for the kind donations and messages. Company, hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the stuff coming out. But for now, we'll see you. Yeah, we'll see everybody later. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.